Yeah. I mean, I, I would put this on because I'm a pale little Scottish man, but I'm in shade. I'm like a vampire. True. I'm like a daywalker. Yeah, everyone did know me as Basketball Craig or the tall guy. So they all knew me for basketball, which is probably good in a way that it heightened. People knew who I was at school just because I was, well, you can't really miss me much. <laughs> I don't fit in showers, I don't fit in beds, but I can't reach the top shelf at the, the shop. Toddlers find it really, really interesting just to stare at you all day long because they just don't understand how you get that big. But uh, yeah, whenever, whenever uh, we have guests over to the house, haven't met me before. The first thing someone in my family will say, "Oh, Craig, stand up. Here's our here's our token freak <laughs> of the of the family." Uh, so I've got such a baby face. So if you actually look at me, I've got the I've got the face of an an eleven year old. I really do. But because no like no one sees my face, they just see here. They just see nipple and chest. So they don't they don't pay attention to my face at all. My dad's six two. I've got an uncle who's a 6'2", an uncle who's 6'3", and another uncle who's 6'2". My mum's 5'4". She's wee Debbie, as wee. She's tiny. Everyone hates each other. It's wet, it's cold. Everyone here is so like, this country's amazing. It's so sunny. The, f the portions. We went out for dinner last night and honestly, I had a pizza the size of a small toddler. It weighed about 30 pounds. So good, yeah. Portion size, patriotism, and uh, uh, the kids don't want to stab you. They might, but they don't want to. <laughs> like 24 7, you don't get threatened with a, a stabbing when you walk in the street. Through the school and through my local league teams, they've all been. We've had at least three or four six foot four, six foot five guys. Uh, I'll run into a five foot seven guy with size 16 feet. My feet are tiny compared to my height. My first Scotland team placement was, I was 14, I think, uh, for the under 14 team. It was, we had, they played a tournament in Edinburgh, it was like a two day tournament, and you get select them through that, I think 30 people out of, I think 300 get chosen for the trials, and then four people get chosen out of that at the tournament as, you get an award and you get a t-shirt and things to say that you got an all tournament team, so I got one of them. So I got the, like the best four at the tournament. And then but you go on to go to the tr uh, tryouts, you get three cuts. So the first cut will take you down to 20, the second cut will take you down to 15, and then the third cut will take you down to 12. So the way it works is the 12 people go away to tournaments, the three others are reserves. So if something happens to me, someone else steps up, which actually happened, and that actually ended my Scotland caps. Um, so yeah, my first one was in four when I was 14, I went to Barcelona for a week. We won that tournament in the Euros. Then we went to France, to Paris, for uh, a series of, I think we played four, um, four friendlies to, against French teams. Won all of them except from one, because we played a, we were under 15s at the time. We got beat by an under 17s team by three points. Uh, then we went to Ireland, where I broke my ankle for the first time. I think it was the first game I had, what was it? I just remember being subbed off, there was a minute left in the game and the, my coach told me there was, I think I had 15 points and 9 rebounds and if I got one more rebound, I could get a double-double. So I went on, I immediately blocked this little ginger kid, landed on his foot and broke my ankle in two places. But after that, because I kept playing after that, which completely messed me up. So I've got horrific knees, I've got horrific hips and my back's horrible. It's just brutal, the training, because you pay, you pay to play with them. You don't, it's not a professional placement, you pay like three, four hundred pounds a year for your trips and things and your training. So you, you have to go all the way up to Aberdeen, which is three hours from my house. So every Sunday I would go three hours up to Aberdeen, train for three hours, come back, and every couple of, um, every couple of weeks or every so often you get a training camp, which again was absolutely brutal. You get eating plans, you get fitness plans. It just turned into a job that you had to pay to do. And I just didn't want to do it. It's kind of an, another reason why I'm here. Like, I've slowly started moving on to coaching instead. Because I'm not going to hurt myself coaching. 
and it's, it doesn't feel too much like a job just because I'm still playing basketball but I'm not having to destroy my body to do it yeah. how I started playing is a really weird story because I never actually played basketball people just told other people that I played basketball so in primary school, primary 7, so I was 11, 10, 11 years old I was just known as the guy who was really good at basketball I'd never touched a basketball in my life just because I was in primary 7, so I was already 5'11", 6 foot by the time I went into high school uh, so they all knew, oh really talk, he's amazing at basketball never played it in my life so eventually I went up to high school and they had like, obviously going up to high school being really tall, they spot you immediately and want you to come along and then they had, heard, they had heard stuff again that I was really good in primary school. I, I had never played basketball in my life. It's just this rumour started going around that I was really, really good at basketball. And then, so in first year, they brought me into the high school team. And that was it from there. Yeah, I started playing centre. Like, just the typical big guy. I was quite heavy as well, so I couldn't run very fast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I probably averaged one in every nine shots. Because I'd stand on the basket, get the ball, Put it in, uh, miss, grab it, 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 and put it in. It's because I was so much taller than the other kids. So I averaged 24 points in my first season, having never played basketball just because I stood under the basket and shot over and over again. Depending on the team, for the national team, I played centre, um, centre shooting forward, and now I, it's just whoever we play. Because we've got quite a sparse team, because everyone's got jobs and it's a men's team, they some days you'll, you just won't have a point guard at all and I'll tend to play that sometimes. Not very often, because I've got some very good point guards, but I tend to be a, a shooting guard or a small forward. I, I'm, I'm, I used to be good. See, because I can't run. I physically can't run right now. Like, I can't even jog, let alone jump and play basketball. Um, I said I'm above average, above average. Well, my first one, I broke my right ankle in two places. Um, and then from then on, that's just been super, super weak. And about eight weeks ago, it's a nasty, nasty video of it. I jumped to try and block someone, landed on their foot, and it just went right angle. It really hurts watching it, but um, yeah, I chipped a bone, had really bad ligament damage in it, and it blew up to the size of a tennis ball. My ankle was black for about probably about three weeks, four weeks. I was captain of our senior team at the at our high school and over here that'd be really really cool like oh yeah captain of the basketball team you get a cool jacket and everything over there you're like a nerd like no one plays basketball over there really but yeah over here like a, a, a senior division one high school team people come and pay to watch like, you struggle to get parents to our games just i mean we won all the time like we won the champ like we went to the national championships twice in a row like two years in a row just no one comes and watches that kind of stuff the finals you'll come and watch just because you know it's going to be good teams but normally you get the PE classes that are forced to come along after class and watch I came to camp, just, it's the cheapest way to get to America really because if, if you're going to come to America for three months it's probably going to cost a British man like what three months, six, five, five, six grand for a holiday, hotels and things come here have some fun in the sun yeah it's, it's just the you're tired 24-7, but it's like the best kind of tired. It's, I uh, it's, uh, it's really fun, but you guys make me so frustrated. <laughs> yeah. It, it is super, super tiring. Like a 20 minute nap is like seven hours. It, it honestly feels like a full night's sleep having a 20, 20 minute nap. Like my, my, uh, my major off today is just mental. Truthfully, I chose French Woods because it was the first people who, it was the only people who uh, gave me a, an offer. I, I took it immediately. It answered everything I wanted. It's got air conditioning, it's electricity, running toilets, Wi-Fi, of course the Wi-Fi. And the food is mental. The food is so good here. Like it's better at home. Better than home. I eat, I honestly, probably two meals out of the three at home, I'll eat bread and cheese and onion crisps. And then the other one is chicken dippers with a side of tomato sauce. It amazes me how children have energy 24 seven. Like, I mean, all the time. You wake them up and 15 minutes after them being woken up, they're bouncing about the place. I, mean, I think I've got a really, really good bunk now. Like, I was really, really lucky that in my first summer, in my first camp, I went to such a good camp.
If someone hasn't seen me stand up, they'll guess I'm about 18, 19. Just because I look like a child. Thanks, Nigel! Is it Nigel? It's not Nigel. I'm sorry, Nigel. I take that back.